Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca. Let's talk about makeup. Okay everyone, I have a tiny window to film here. My son is napping, or rather he is in his crib angrily protesting the tyranny of nap time. That's good enough for me. I am trying to clean and pack, get ready for the trip next week. I didn't even bother cleaning up behind me. We're gonna ignore that for now. Today we're gonna talk about my no buy slash no buy situation and what all came into my collection in the month of April. Now, listen, there were a lot of sales. <laughs> I can explain, okay? I can explain, there were a lot of sales. Let's get to it. First, low buy, no buy. I managed to not buy any more lip products since I put lip products on a low buy uh, last month. And, okay, that's not true. There is a lip product, but okay, I, bu I bought a lip liner, we'll get there but technically lip liners aren't on, aren't part of my low buy. So I managed not to pick up any more lipsticks, tempting as it was. Uh, there is one product that came into my collection that's a little bit of a kind of a gray area. It's a gray area. You guys are gonna tell, have to tell me what you think. Okay, so I was at TJ Maxx like a week ago and I saw this on the shelf, which was something that I've always wanted to try out. This is the Mally Face Defender in Universal. It's this silicone -y, let me see if I can open it. It's kind of like jelly-like silicone product that is, uh, it's a shine control product. It's a really weird product. But um, let's see, do I have any shine on my face right now? It's really good at taking down the shine without leaving any detectable product on the surface of your skin. Anyway, for years and years, I heard Emily Noel. I heard El Emily Noel here on YouTube talk about this as like a lifesaver for combo oily skin. I've always wanted to try it, but it was like $40 or something like that. And I was just like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna pay that for a product that I don't know if it will even work for me. I do have to tell you, I've tried it a couple of times. I do like this. The reason why I picked it up is because I saw it in TJ Maxx and it was like $10 on clearance. So I picked her up. I have used it a couple of times and I have enjoyed it. I feel like I need to test it a little bit more thoroughly just to see how much I prefer it to just straight powder. Here's the thing is you can use it as a primer as well. I have not used it that way. Only thing is my primers are on a low buy and my powders are on a no buy. So <laughs> regardless of how I decide to classify this, I'd probably, was an out of season purchase. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't wasn't quite what I was shooting for why I instituted my low buy no buy, but I couldn't $10. I thought I've I've wanted to try this for years, like literally like 6 or 7 years, and I've heard great things about it. I just could not I could not at that price. You know what I'm saying? Technically, yes. I feel like this does break the low buy rule. However, Given the fact that I'm literally days away, days away from completely 100% completing my Danessa Myrick's uh, Blurring Balm powder that I use for a primer through my T-zone during the warmer months, uh, I don't know. Yes, I suppose it breaks my low buy. But it's not that bad, right? <laughs> I was just, you know, I jumped the gun a little bit. <laughs> Anyway, so that was the only purchase that I made this month that was kind of like in in the in the red zone a little bit. So I do have, however, quite a few other things here. So let's talk about it. The Sephora sale happened at the beginning of the month of beginning of April, and I it was really funny because I had a gift card. I 100% could could have used that gift card. I did still want to spend within the boundaries of my low buy no buy because that's not the low buy no buy isn't necessarily just about m the money that I'm spending, whether or not I have it in my budget, whether or not it's fiscally responsible, but it's also kind of about the size of my collection and encouraging me to use what I already have because I've got plenty of pretty much everything. Um, I can't really say that there's ever going to be a situation where I see something and I need it because it literally fills a hole in my collection. I don't think I have holes in my collection at this point. I've got more 
than is sufficient. You know what I'm saying? I also want to keep my collection at a size where I can reasonably expect not to use all of it. That is not a possibility. I am not going to be using, using up everything or even panning everything. I want to be able to use and enjoy every item. However, I don't want things sitting in my collection that I've used that I haven't used first. And I don't want things in my collection that I've only used a couple of times. You know, I really want to be able to use and enjoy everything that's in my collection. And in order to do that, the low buy, no buy is kind of how I'm trying to help get to that place. So uh, while I was looking at the Sephora sale, I just, there were a few things I was really thinking about, but by the time I got around to actually placing an order, they had sold out. So the only two things that I ended up picking up, this brush, their number 47 uh, pro, pro foundation brush. I already have one of these. So I now have two of these. And this is quite possibly my favorite brush in the entire world for applying cream products to the cheek. I like it for blush and I also like it for contour or cream bronzer. I really, really enjoy this brush for that purpose. The reason why I got two of the, these is because I wanted to have one that I can use for contour and bronzer and then one that I can use for blush without having to clean it in between because they're cream products. It's just a lot of hassle trying to switch between the two without cross contaminating. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to have one specifically for my, my blush products and one specifically for my contour bronzer products. I just, it's the shape. I think it's the shape that does it for me. The person who recommended this brush to me was Makayla from Makayla Talks. Um, she also, she used to be Miss Budget Beauty, but she changed it to Makayla Talks. She does vlogs. She is just the most lovely, hilarious, and entertaining human being. I've watched her for several years now, and she really loved this brush, and she was not wrong. I love this brush to love this brush. So now I have two of them. My only qualm is I do sometimes lose hairs uh, when washing these brushes because I'm using them primarily with cream products. I do have to be a little bit more thorough during the washing process and I do feel like I lose more hairs than I think I should for a brush that cost cost me $20. This is $30, but I got it for 21 something uh, in the Sephora sale because the Sephora collection products are 30% off during the Sephora sale. So that was a good deal, but they were still, still at 20 bucks a piece. I kind of feel like um, I, I wish the quality was a little bit higher. They're very, very soft. I have no uh, qualms with the performance. It's just the longevity that I'm concerned about. If any of you are aware of a brush roughly this size that's got that soft angled taper like that, it's kind of a kitty paw type of brush that I can acquire from another source that might be better made, please let me know in the comments because I would not mind spending a little bit extra on something that's gonna last me longer than I think these brushes are going to last me. Okay, so that was one thing that I got from Sephora. Okay, I guess I got three things from Sephora. So I picked this up in store and then I ordered online and they just arrived like days ago. Um, it took them weeks to get these to me. I got a jar of the Ordinary L-Asorbic Acid Powder because I would like to have a little bit more i really enjoy vitamin c but i have a lot of trouble applying vitamin c on my neck because my neck is a lot more sensitive than the skin on my face and so i would like the ability to concoct something a little bit different with a lower concentration of vitamin c maybe a little bit more buffering to apply to my neck and then something a little bit stronger for my face and hands without having to have two different serums that I'm concerned about going bad. Uh, vitamin C is very unstable. So once combined with water, it, it will oxidize. That's why your vitamin C serums turn orange. That's the reason why it really annoys me when companies sell vitamin C serums that already have orange coloring in them because you can't monitor uh, the efficacy of your vitamin C serum by seeing how quickly it turns from clear to orange. Um, anyway, so usually I'm using the Dr. Brenner's. Right now I still am working on the last bits of my Mad Hippie vitamin C serum, um, which definitely is nicer to my neck, but I feel it's not as effective on my face. So 
anyway that's why I picked this one up I have been thinking about picking this up for a while so I went ahead and I it wasn't much of a discount it was like a 15% off discount on a product that's like ten dollars less than ten dollars maybe so but I figured while I was putting in an order I might as well last thing I just got a red lip liner this one ended up on honestly I should have picked this one up in store too it ended up being a little bit more cherry than what I'm looking for but I that is a hole in my collection <laughs> I have purple liners I have brown liners I have pink liners I don't have a sufficient red liner in my collection right now and I was hoping this was the one I don't know I'm gonna have to pair it with a couple of my red lips see how it works it seems awfully creamy for a really bold color I prefer something a little waxier but we're gonna try it out anyway so those were the things that I purchased during the Sephora sale and then about a week later this was the big purchase of the month to be perfectly honest I picked up some refer brushes correction I picked up some more refer brushes so <laughs> I bought these refer brushes for myself at Christmas as a Christmas gift and I don't know if I've ever spoken about my resistance to purchasing any refer brushes first of all I, it annoys me when I feel like when a company does a really huge social media push and I feel like every single influencer is talking about it and it's coming at me from all sides that bothers me a little bit I almost feel like the product is sort of being forced down my throat I think that's part of the reason why I never jumped on board the the Morphe train I was never interested I've never tried any of their eyeshadows I'm sure they're perfectly fine I think I might have a couple of their brushes now um, and of course I use the Morphe continuous setting mist but the first time I picked up a can of that it was years after Morphe had peaked in their popularity so I just I don't like being bombarded with a product and I felt like I was bombarded with refer uh, for a while there and I'm sure some of you felt the same way um, also a little bit of their initial marketing push kind of bothered me a little bit I don't know if anybody, uh, any of you remember what their initial advertising angle was, but basically it was a couple of male engineers, okay, who had come into this dominantly female space and their, their angle was women have too many makeup brushes. We can just make you a handful of well-engineered brushes and those brushes will suit all of your makeup needs so you don't have to be so inefficient having three zillion brushes. First of all, slightly condescending, okay? Slightly condescending. Second of all, guess who has a zillion brushes now? Refer has a zillion brushes. They're successful, so why wouldn't they keep creating the products and then trying to refine them? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, the, the condescension and hypocrisy <laughs> of that initial marketing push really put me off of Refer for a while. However, I eventually did break down and buy a set, obviously. That's why we're talking about this. Rebecca and it's because I have a decent sized uh, makeup brush collection various different creators um, most of them are on the lower end of brushes as an artist I really don't feel like you need really high-end tools in order to get a good result however as a makeup lover I kind of felt like I was ready to level up my tools like I have a really nice makeup collection I have a lot of fun with my makeup I wanted to invest in slightly higher quality brushes that are going to have more longevity that are going to be a little bit more refined and it's not that you can't get a good result with lower end brushes but I do think with better designed brushes they can definitely make certain tasks easier if that makes sense so I decided to pull the trigger on refer primarily because the other options that I was considering at the time were Sonia G, BK Beauty, and Wayne Goss. <laughs> Their brushes are very dear, very, very dear. And Refer, after Christmas, just had a killer sale. They regularly have pretty good, like 40% off sales. So I went ahead and got the 10 brush set, and wouldn't you know, I fell in love. I fell in love. I just, I don't want to use, I don't want to use anything else. It's not that those other brushes can't do what I need them to do. I just, I enjoy the experience of using these refer brushes more than my any, any of my other brushes. The way they are designed, the softness of the bristles. I just, I love the brushes. I love them. So I will forgive refer their tone deaf initial marketing push. 
because the brushes are really, really lovely and the price was really quite good. I got them 40% off. I think that the set of 10 was just under a hundred, which is still for me personally, someone who gets, who I've been an eco tools, real techniques person for years. Like my favorite blush brush to this day is one that I got from Claire's like 15 years ago. So to make a long story long, they had another sale this month and they have come out with um, some of their more popular eye brushes in a Mac set. So 30, I think it's 30% larger and 30% smaller. And they had a bundle deal. I bought them both. I bought them both. Sorry, not sorry. I have no regrets. <laughs> these are dirty. You can see these are dirty because I've just been using the heck out of them. So I now have 20 refer eyeshadow brushes. I now need to rehome all the rest of my eyeshadow brushes because I just, I'm not interested in using anything else. <laughs> I'm just not interested. I just, I don't care to. I, this like does everything for me. I really like the Mac set because I do have larger eyes. I have a fair amount of lid space. And I do like the fact that, cause like when I'm doing crease work here, there, there's because even though it's I'm I've got a hooded eye, okay. There's a lot of ground for me to cover there. You know what I'm saying? In order to get the blend up above the crease where it'll actually be visible. So, I really enjoy this brush. This is the 15 Max. I also really enjoy just the 15. Um, another brush that I am really really enjoying is this this little guy here. I what I used to do is I had some very short stubby uh brushes that i would stamp some dark color along here and then i would go get a fluffier brush and blend it out i can just do both which is this one i just love this this one i used for liner today just as like a powder liner i kind of i put a i think it was a an envelope up against my eye and did some powder liner like this but it's also lovely for an inner corner highlight i just it was a big expense it was a big expense. I think the bundle set for these 10 were, it was 120. I think with the 40% off was 120. So I spent a lot of money on brushes this month and um, brushes maybe need to go on a no buy now. <laughs> Brushes maybe need to go on a no buy. Um, a really nice thing is they sent me a tube of their light hydration cream. Um, I didn't realize that they were making some skincare, but apparently they're making some skincare. I've used it a couple of times. This is a really nice hydrating, but very lightweight daytime moisturizer sort of situation for me. Um, it's in a metal tube. They also sent a little tube key with it when, when the time comes that I need to use that. So that was, very nice. It's the least they could do after I dropped over a hundred dollars on their website. <laughs> and yeah, anyway, so I am pleased with that purchase. Well, it was a lot of money. It was a big expenditure, but so far no regrets. And then I do have a little bit of makeup other than the Mali, the Mali re recent acquisition for me. So there was the Mali and then I bought the lip liner at Sephora. So the other two things, these I acknowledge right now that these were not wise or necessary purchases, <laughs> but I bought them anyway. <laughs> so let's talk about it. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Hold on. Okay, a tiny bit more skincare before I talk to you about the two eyeshadow palettes that I bought this month, <laughs> two. I am running low on my Garnier Micellar Water. I picked that one up. Uh, because I heard somebody recommend it. It's the first time I have ever used a micellar water. I enjoy it. I have liked it. Um, and I wanted, I, I particularly, I enjoy using it as a cleanser in the morning. Um, <laughs> in the past, to be perfectly honest, my morning skincare routine is very low maintenance. It usually involves a baby wipe. Um, I'm not removing any makeup. I'm not removing any like heavy duty skincare that needs to be removed. I'm just uh, mostly just removing sweat and oil from the night's sleep. You know what I'm saying? So it's always been basically a baby wipe and then my morning time skin skincare. But I am enjoying the micellar water life, um, but I'm running low on the Garnier micellar water. So uh, I, I somebody recommended that to me, but then I heard somebody else saying that Bioderma is so far above and beyond that Garnier. So I picked up a bottle of Bioderma. I got this on clearance at TJ Maxx for 
$5, um, which I thought was a pretty decent value for this amount of micellar water. And I will keep you posted how I feel about that. Other than that, I have two more things to show you. They're both <laughs> eyeshadow palettes. They're from ColourPop. This is ColourPop's Off Melrose, and this is ColourPop's Flutterby eyeshadow palettes. Now these are a couple of eyeshadow palettes that I do not need. They are somewhat redundant in my collection. They are also gonna make life more difficult for me because in my color pan project pan, I am attempting to use all of my, it's a monthly thing, right? And I'm trying to use all of my ColourPop eyeshadow palettes by the end of the year. I started the year with 14 eyeshadow palettes, which meant that two months out of the year, I was going to have to use two. I was going to have to double up. Now I have bought two more. So four months out of the year, I'm going to have to double up. <laughs> I need to Rebecca. Anyway, the reason why I purchased these two in particular is because these were palettes that I always really enjoyed the look of them but I knew they were somewhat similar to other things that I had in my collection, so I never pulled the trigger. But then when they popped up in TJ Maxx, I just couldn't help myself. Can I just show you, this is Flutterby. Oh my goodness, how pretty is she? Now, uh, if I were to go get my, I don't know, like my Menage a Moi, Menage a Moi is gonna be a little bit pinker and a little bit more purpley but it's gonna really have similar vibes. And then there's this one. Now, if I go and get my 1111 palette, there's gonna be some overlap for sure with this palette. Neither of these are bringing anything wildly new to my collection. They're just really pretty. <laughs> and I have thought about buying them for years, but uh, talked myself out of it until this month and I a good sale gets me every time a good sale gets me every time were they necessary purchases no uh, do they fill a hole in my collection absolutely not <laughs> but they're so pretty look how pretty they are look at that soft pretty neutrally goodness these are actually both pretty similar to each other as well <laughs> I have used Flutterby a couple of times. It is really soft and pretty and I do enjoy it. I have yet to use Off Melrose. So that's the damage I did this month. I did, I did a fair amount of damage. If we don't consider the makeup brushes, I don't know why we wouldn't consider the makeup brushes. But if we to took those off the table, if the makeup brush n never happened, I, it, it was okay. I, I did all right. I, I did buy two eyeshadow palettes. I don't need two eyeshadow palettes, but I'm looking at here, here at all of the things that are not the makeup brushes. And I'm like, hmm, yeah, I'm doing all right. As, at least as far as expenditure goes. But man, you pop these on the babies on the table. I did some damage this month. What can we do people? What can we do? We can just hope for a better month next month. We can do better next month. Anyway, that is all I have for you. That is everything that entered my collection in the month of April. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.